Hi, welcome back. On this episode, we're going to talk about uh, riding in the rain, and uh, I'm going to go off on a couple little small tangents about riding in general, but uh, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification button and check me out on Instagram at Clover Garage. Um, before we get into the video, we'll, uh, we'll talk about me a little bit and why I'm uh, making this video. I, I had somebody comment on one of my adventures with uh, Clark Garage videos when I was riding in the rain and uh, they just asked if I had any tips or anything. So I'm just talking about the things that I uh, keep in mind when I'm riding in the rain. There's lots more out there. If you Google it or whatever or talk to other riders, that will tell you maybe some different things or some extra things. But uh, these are the things that I keep in mind when I'm riding the, on roads that are getting into really bad shape due to rain or even some dirt or gravel. I'll use similar uh, riding methods at the same time. My, uh, my riding qualifications, I've been riding for uh, a long time now. I've, I've had my license since I was 17 and uh, I bought my first bike when I was 17 as well. That's my little blue Suzuki Marauder. I've had that since high school. That's the first bike I've ever bought. And then, uh, so I was 17 then and I'm, I'm 33 now. So I've been riding a lot. I average around uh, 13 to 15,000 kilometers a year. I ride in all types of weather, rain, wind, below zero. That we're up in Canada, so I've ridden in the snow. I've ridden on snow-covered roads. I've uh, been caught in hail and snow multiple times over the years. And I just typically ride, and I've uh, I always use my brain when I'm uh, riding in uh, poor conditions and that kind of stuff. And I'm always thinking about what I can do to make sure that I'm safe when I'm riding to uh, avoid a single vehicle accident due to uh, if I was using the wrong method or if my uh, riding skills weren't up to uh, par with the conditions that I'm riding in. You, you want to make sure that you're uh, riding within your limits. You never want to ride outside of your limits. You always want to ride within your limits. And it's always good to try new techniques and that kind of stuff in a safe, controlled environment on a good, solid uh, ground. So you don't want to uh, try something new on the worst road you've ever seen or in a rainstorm, try, try a method that you've never tried before. You want to try it in a controlled environment so you can see how the bike feels and, and that kind of stuff. You don't want to... Uh, go right for it and then uh, have an accident because you never tested it first, if that makes sense. So, but I have, I have lots of riding experience. I've been all over the place. So I'm in uh, Ontario, Northern Ontario and Pacific, but uh, I've been to the East Coast. I've ridden all the way down to uh, New Orleans. I've been all over the place in all type of uh, conditions. So I have quite a bit of ex experience of the real world, not just theoretical before making this video. So this is the stuff that I do when I'm riding. And uh, I hope you find this helpful. And these are just suggestions. They're not, uh, this is what you have to do. You gotta do what's right for you. But this is what I've found works well for me and uh, will make a uh, big difference in your riding on different conditions, in rain and on dirt roads and that kind of stuff. It, uh, it all helps and I hope uh, this video is helpful for you and makes you a better, safer rider. Um, if you like videos like this, I don't mind making these type of videos. They're uh, they're fun to make, and they're uh, they're they probably help out a lot of people with uh, all different skill levels and everything. It's not necessarily a a bad thing to uh, be asking questions about riding. It's always a good thing to uh, be wanting to improve. Because as riders, we should always be striving to to improve our riding skills and become better riders, safer riders. So, and, and trying different uh, techniques and that kind of stuff in a controlled environment so you, you're comfortable with it before you get in a situation is always the uh, best, right? We never want to try something new when we're in a situation trying to drive for our lives, right? We want to uh, figure it out before we uh, need to do it to try to save our lives or our passenger's life or whatever, right? Because 
that is the uh, consequence sometimes if we do make a mistake or if we get in a situation and we're not we're not prepared for the uh, situation, we could be driving for our lives or our passengers' lives or both, right? So we always got to uh, do our best to keep ourselves safe and keep our passengers safe and uh, avoid all the uh, vehicles around us. So we're going to get started. I haven't really... Uh, planned anything out. I had uh, somebody ask me to do a, if I could give them some tips for uh, riding in the rain and I thought it'd be easier doing a video. I never really, uh, I didn't write anything down. I'm just going by what pops in my head as I go because when I'm riding this is the stuff that I'd be thinking about. I don't have time to uh, Google or check stuff. This is the stuff that I've done for years now and it's worked quite well for me. I've never had an issue. I have uh, hydroplaned and that kind of stuff over the years. I've broke loose lots on uh, wet roads and that kind of stuff. Um, for the most part, other than hydroplaning, that, that, that's never a uh, fun situation. It can go hairy really quick. I've always been lucky. I've been able to uh, keep things uh, good and straight and uh, protect myself and I'll go over the things that we need to do to do that. And then as far as giving too much gas and breaking loose, like I've I've done that lots. Typically it's uh, wet roads and you're playing around a little bit, but you can get in that same situation very easily with uh, without trying to play around. I've had that happen too when I've had crummy tires on a bike, like my, my Yamaha came with Bridgestones on it. And if you have Bridgestones on your bike, and especially if the ones that came on your Yamaha, cruiser there or Silverado, I would next time you gotta change tires, get rid of those tires. Those were the worst tires I've ever had in the rain. Right from brand new, they were the worst tire I've, I've ever had in the rain. One time I had Avon's where you could see the uh, white uh, belts, like like the tire skin itself, not not the, bra the black rubber, but the actual white uh, canvas underneath the black rubber. And uh, those tires still grip better in the rain than those Bridgestones did. So I would not, if you have, I'm not sure what model of Bridgestone had came on the bike originally, but they were terrible tires and I would highly recommend if you have those to get rid of them because they were uh, super dangerous and I will never run a Bridgestone on another motorcycle ever again because of that, because they were that dangerous. And uh, you could be a very skilled rider and it is, it is still uh, very sketchy compared to any other tire I've ever run. So, but we're going to get started, and uh, hopefully this is helpful. Leave some comments if you have any questions or anything, and uh, here we go. All right, so riding in the rain can be uh, a little more dangerous on a motorbike for a uh, few different reasons. Biggest one, it's a lot more slick. Also harder for us to see, as well as the other cars around us to see. So that imposes a... Uh, extra level of danger just because even on a good bright sunny day it's hard for people to see motorbikes for some reason which is unfortunate so keep that in mind and uh, also it's it's just uncomfortable sometimes you're either cold and wet your leathers or whatever might be getting tight you might be getting you'll get fatigued faster so it's all uh things we got to kind of uh pay attention to. So I'm just going to uh, use the chalkboard here and we're going to uh, kind of talk about some of the things that I try to keep in mind while I'm riding. Not necessarily, if, if, you, if you go on Google, I'm sure there's going to be a lot more stuff that will pop up, but I'm going to try to uh, just talk about the things that I keep in mind while I'm riding in the uh, rain and uh, some of the things that I do and why I do them versus uh, how you might normally ride on uh, regular dry asphalt when you're out riding. So the first thing I'm going to uh, mention is uh, riding in the rain. If you're going to uh, sum it up in one word for making it safe as possible, smooth. You want to be smooth in all your motions. You want to be smooth on the gas, smooth on the brake, and uh, smooth with your uh, turning. Because if you do any uh, sh sharp accelerations, really hard sudden braking, extreme uh, 
turning that's really jerky or whatever. Those are all the things that are going to make your tires break loose and uh, put you into uh, some type of a skid and possibly lose control and wipe out. So we'll talk about acceleration first. So if you live in Canada and you drive in the winter, you'll have uh, an idea of what I'm talking about. If you live in a warmer climate where you don't get a lot of snow and ice on your roads in the winter time, it might be a little bit foreign to you. So if you give uh, too much gas, the uh, back tire will break loose and your back end will start fishtailing. And if it fishtails too far, you could uh, lose your balance and wipe out or you could uh, start to slide. And then the, if you end up letting most people let off the gas and then sometimes the back tire will catch and it will, uh, if you're on the bike, it'll fling you up and it'll fling you up and off, which is called high siding. So if you get in that situation, there's uh, two things to do. You could uh, hit the brake, hit, hit your rear brake and keep that back tire locked up and then steer out of it. And the reason you would uh, keep that back tire locked up and steer out of it till you come to a complete stop or until you're completely straight and you feel as though it's safe to release the rear brake is to avoid that high siding action that will buck you off the bike. So. So that's one thing to uh, keep in mind. So the easiest way to avoid that is uh, just go easy on the gas, go easy on your clutch. Don't uh, dump the clutch and give her a lot of gas because you're going to uh, break loose and could get in a situation. Just go nice and easy. Feather the clutch out nice, nice. Low RPM on the uh, bike, is on the engine itself, and just uh, creep away from your lights nice and easy. And same thing with shifting when you're running through your gears, getting up to speed. Don't uh, go real hard and dump the clutch. Just just nice and easy motions. It's, it's not a race. So just go easy with that. So that's the uh, first thing. That's an easy way where people uh, break loose. And you also want to watch out for uh, manhole covers. And uh, even like the, the painted lines on the road. Whether it be the uh, wide white line at a stoplight or stop sign. Or uh, the uh, lane lines when you're going down the road, those are all extra slippery when it's raining. So you wanna be cautious with all your movements when you're going over those lines. If you can avoid them, but sometimes you don't have a, a choice and you gotta drive over them. Same with the uh, tar lines, the road snakes that we, uh, a, lot of, a lot of us call them, at least up in this area, a lot of us just call them road snakes, but where there's cracks in the road and they uh, put tar over them, to uh, try to keep the water out from freezing, expanding, and ruining the road quicker. Those also uh, are very, very slick when uh, riding in the rain. <clears throat> um, the next thing would be braking. So you don't want to go up real hot to light and then uh, hammer your brakes and all of a sudden you start sliding. So because Braking puts uh, even more uh, risk of losing control. There's one thing if your uh, back tire starts slipping, you can let off the brake on your front and you can just steer out of it as long as you have an appropriate amount of distance and you're probably going to be fine. A, a back tire slip, I've always thought and said, is the, uh, the, the, the best. If you have to have one tire slipping, it's always better for it to be your back tire because you can just stay off the gas and you can uh, kind of steer out where you need to go or where the bike's telling you where to steer if it's trying to pitch you one way or the other you can kind of go by feel make sure you don't panic because panicking is always the worst thing you want to just stay nice and calm and uh, try to drive through it but if your front tire starts to slip that's a whole other uh, ball game you're a lot more likely to uh, drop your bike and crash if your front tire starts slipping. So you, you want to be extra careful that you're not braking too hard and putting that front tire in a slip because when that front tire starts to slip, it's gonna the bike's going to want to wipe out. And you also don't have your uh, control either. Like you can't just steer out of something. If your front tire is slipping, any uh, motion you try to do, the bike's going to uh, want to go that way. So if you're straight up, you hit the brake real hard and it... Uh, and it's starting to slip and you put a little bit of weight and you lean the bike, the bike's going to uh, much quicker than normal want to uh, lay over and then slip out from underneath you. So a front tire slip is uh, 
I, I've always thought one of the harder things to recover from. It uh, happens very quick and it, uh, it it's real hard to recover from because you, you lose the ability to uh, theoretically steer out of it. You need to try to get the bike if you're at all lean one way or the other. You want to make sure you get that bike straight up and down. And usually if you're in a front tire uh, skid, you're usually already in some type of a, of a corner or something, or you have a bit of a lean, so that bike's gonna wanna go up from underneath you very quick. It's not too often you're uh, straight up and down, because if you're straight up and down, you can kind of uh, control it not too bad, but if you're at any type of uh, lean or anything, or if the grade of the road even is on a slant, and even though you're up and down, but the road is on a slant, it makes it a lot harder to uh, recover, because the bike's going to want to wash out from underneath you, unfortunately. So when we're coming up to a stop site, stop signs and, and red lights, or if a car pulls out in front of you and you're doing a uh, emergency brake to avoid the car, those are things you got to kind of pay attention to. The easiest thing to do is uh, threshold braking. When you're driving a, your car, your truck, and if you don't have any lock brakes, a lot of motorbikes are starting to get analog brakes on them now, but anything uh, mid to late 2000s, a lot of them analog brakes was uh, still fairly new. Like none of my bikes have analog brakes on them. So I have the uh, old style, which would be like driving like a vehicle from the uh, early 90s or uh, late 80s and older. They typically didn't have analog brakes on them. So there was, you always did uh, threshold braking. So it's kind of the same concept. If you're in your car, you would be on your brake and you could almost kind of lift your toes up and it would pulsate the brakes just a little bit, just enough. But if they started to lock up, you kind of lift your toes and take a little bit of weight off the uh, pedal and it would uh, let, allow the wheels to catch a little bit because as soon as the wheels are locked up, you lose your control. It doesn't matter if you're a motorbike or on a four-wheeled vehicle or whatever, it's the uh, same principle. There's just an extra risk because on a motorbike, we can topple over, unfortunately. So, so it's the same thing on a motorbike. You're, you're on the brakes, whether it's your back brake that's skating or your front brake or both. So you might be like a puppet working uh, everything, trying to uh, get yourself into uh, a stable bike again. But uh, so you'd be on your brake and if it uh, starts to uh, feel it's starting to lock up, you gotta ease off on it a little bit. You don't gotta ease off all the way, but you gotta ease off a little bit and allow that tire to re-grip the road, and then uh, you can apply a little more brake pressure again. And it might kind of lock and, and spin, lock and spin, and you're just gonna work it nice and gently until you uh, come to a safe, controlled stop. So it, it's one of those things that's hard to practice, because to practice it, you're putting yourself in a bad situation. So the best thing is to just slow down. If you see the light going red or you think the light's gonna go red, start slowing it down ahead of time so you're not racing up and braking as hard as you possibly can. You wanna just go into it nice and easy and uh, that's the uh, typically the safest way. You don't want hard brakes when it's uh, wet out or you're unsure about the uh, road conditions underneath you. So, so that's something to keep in mind too. Um, if you're coming up to a light and uh, the light's green and there's crosswalk signs and they're flashing, if you're in a bigger city, a lot of them will have uh, numbers counting down to uh, zero so you know how long before you have approximately before that light turns yellow, which is really nice. If you're in a smaller town like what I'm in, the uh, crosswalks will go from walk and then they'll start flashing. And you can usually count on average, it seems to be about eight eight to 10 flashes, typically eight, but some of them are, are 10 or so, flashes of the uh, do not walk before the light will turn amber or yellow. So, so if you're riding up the light screen and you notice that that uh, crosswalk's flashing not to walk, start counting those because because then you'll have an idea of, okay, I can make this light, so I'm going to maintain my speed. Because you know, if you slow down 
and you don't and you and you could have made it now you might be putting yourself in a bad situation so you want to maintain your uh, cruising speed unless you've calculated quickly in your head that you're not going to make that light and you're going to have to stop and instead of doing a hard quick stop you can just start slowing down comfortably and always watch your mirrors behind you too in case the cars behind you don't realize you're slowing down or stopping you, you don't want to get rear-ended because they're also going to be running in on that slicker road surface so you always want to watch behind you too but you definitely uh, can use those crosswalks to judge if a light's going to uh, turn or not so so you can keep that in mind for uh, coming up to lights and that kind of stuff for as far as lights changing um, the next thing we should talk about is uh, turning so you can't corner hard like you normally would on dry roads dry clean roads the further over you lean the better chance you have of your tires slipping out and the further over you are the quicker they'll slip out and give you less time to react so you want to try to keep your bike more straight up and down like you, you can still lean and you sh shouldn't have any issues leaning if you're going within the speed limits I've never had an issue typically if the roads are wet long as I'm within the speed limits maybe slow down a little bit extra for the uh, corners more than you normally would when you're coming at an intersection making a left or right hand turn slow down a little bit extra but typically if you're running on the highway you should be able to uh, you should be able to run the speed limit within a relatively uh, practical gap from the speed limit whether you're going slightly above or slightly below typically I've always found it safer to be uh, going slightly above the speed limit because if you're going too slow you get cars coming behind you and then they start crowding you and then when they pass they typically hug really tight into your lane because you're smaller and they kind of almost muscle you off to the shoulder and they're, they're almost kind of crowd you where if you're going a little bit over the speed limit you get less people coming up and uh, tailgating you and crowding you so you're better off to go slightly faster than the speed limit I find and even slightly faster than all the vehicles around you like a kilometer or two faster just so you're moving up versus getting crowded within reason like if everyone's going 160 mile an hour just let them go don't try to go 162 mile an hour just uh, just just let them go but if everyone if you're in like say a, a 90 kilometer zone and everyone's cruising 95 or 100 you might be better to cruise like 96 or 97 or like 101 102 because then you're going to be the one that's coming up on them so you can control the distance you have between them and you can control your pass and give yourself a, a lot of room to uh, go around safely or in passing lanes is always the best so then you don't have to worry about giving your heart and passing a car and they're possibly getting a speeding ticket even though you're just speeding for a split second or something and now we want to talk about road surfaces themselves so if you're on a road that they just laid fresh asphalt there's uh, and then you and then it's raining it's the first uh, couple rains even like the first month or so even if it rained every day that month be extra careful so so you have your uh, new road surface here and uh, doesn't really matter where you are on the road for for this uh, scenario but with fresh asphalt so there's a lot of oils like in the tire and everything that hold the asphalt together so you have your rain coming down on it so that's that's supposed to be rain it's that's not the best drawer so you have your rain it's hitting the asphalt and then we know that uh, water is heavier than oil so when that rain hits the asphalt it starts pushing all the oil to the uh, surface so the oil starts getting pushed to the surface and this makes for an extra extra slick road and on top of that since it's fresh asphalt you don't have any of the uh, rough road or little bumps or anything on it it's uh, perfectly flat and then you get that oil on there and it turns into an incredibly slick road and I, I've always found that this is the uh, sketchiest thing to ride on in the rain is uh, fresh asphalt because it's incredibly slick you can just 
kind of crack your throttle like that and uh, nine times out of ten you'll feel that back end starting to walk on you so fresh asphalt is uh, use extra caution it's the uh, sketchiest thing use lots of caution when you're riding on uh, fresh asphalt because all the oils come up and uh, they go to the surface and it's uh, like riding on ice almost almost like riding on black ice because you might not necessarily see that it's all oil that you're riding on <clears throat> oh when it comes to uh, turning so this is our road so this is our uh, motorbike and then this will be uh, us we're grabbing the bars we have our feet on our uh, foot pegs so, a little exhaust on there make it look cool so so when you're riding if we're going to make a uh, left hand turn here so we're, we're pushing with this hand on our handlebar and then on our opposite leg so this is our left hand we're pushing we're, we like to do push steering right like we're not turning our bars like that when we're with any type of speed we're, we're pushing and if you're cornering hard enough your wheels actually pushing the other turn pointing the other way even though you're turning the opposite way it's, it's cool physics is awesome right but on our uh, right leg we want to push down on that foot peg so when you're pushing down on the foot peg you're uh, bringing the center of gravity from this bike instead of the bike leaning way over like this maybe and uh, getting the same turn you can push harder on your uh, left hand and you push uh, hard with your right foot and that will bring the center of gravity a little bit lower on the bike and you can almost get the same corner and have the bike only leaned part of the way over instead of all the way over which puts us in a safer situation so you can take a uh, corner that if you're only pushing with your arm and not on your foot peg on the opposite side, you'd, uh, you might be able to take the corner on a wet road or on gravel. I, I use this lots when I ride on gravel and I, I do try to use it on wet roads too because it helps with the center of gravity. But say you could take a corner at uh, say like 20 kilometers an hour safely when you uh, add this pushing in, you can usually add five, sometimes even 10 kilometers to your uh, speed, or even better, keep the same speed, but it makes the bike that much more stable. But on dirt, that works really well. So you can, you can actually carry some pretty good speed in dirt if you're uh, doing that. Even with uh, our street tires on our big heavy cruisers, I've done lots of dirt road riding, and, and that makes a huge difference, which is pretty awesome. So always keep that in your pocket. So, and the, uh, the other thing, when you're going in a corner that I, I've heard this saying lots in racing and it uh, holds true on the street and on dirt and especially in the rain, in slow, out fast. You don't necessarily have to go out fast, but you always want to go in slow to your corner. If you go in too quick into your corner, you may overshoot and get yourself in a situation where you're slipping and sliding and uh, possibly down your bike. So you always want to go in slow. So as you go in slow, and that everything's in control, and then once you hit the uh, apex of your corner and you're good, you can start building some speed up, which is nice. So, and this is the same thing for if we're turning right. So, draw our bike again. We got our body. We got our foot pegs. Little exhaust it looks good so so say we're making a right hand turn so this is our right arm and we're putting pressure down on the handlebar with our right arm and on our left foot we're pushing down on our uh, left foot peg to instead of having the center of gravity out here we're bringing the center of gravity in which allows us more control the bike's a lot more stable in the corner, so it's uh, whatever way you want to go. So in this case, we're going right, 
So we're pushing with our right hand and we're pushing down with our left foot on the uh, running board or on your foot peg. And if you wanna go left, it's the complete opposite. Left arm pushing down and right leg pushing down. So keep that in mind. And then like when I say uh, in slow out fast, So if this was our corner, so our corner starts right about there. And then, uh, so this leading up to it is all straight, right? So this might be making a left hand turn in an intersection or it could be a tight windy road. For uh, this scenario, it doesn't really matter, but we wanna be braking, we'll use a B for braking before we hit that corner. We don't wanna be doing any braking or anything like that or shifting in the corner, especially when it's wet. We just want to uh, be going a nice, easy, simple speed. And uh, we want to have all that stuff done before we get to, the, to initiate our corner. So we're gonna brake ahead of time because that's when our vehicle, our motorbike is the most stable it's gonna be is when we're going in our straight line. As Soon as we get into a corner or anything, we're adding more forces than just braking or accelerating. So you, you're all done braking and then you just wanna run constant speed. So we'll just use, I guess, C for constant speed. And then right about here, our, uh, our corner is finished. And then this is when we can get on the gas and accelerate up to our uh, speed again. So then we're able to accelerate up to speed and uh, carry on with our, uh, our drive nice and safe and having fun other than being in the rain. So you always want to brake when you're on your straight stretch, try to keep a constant speed and uh, not accelerate or brake in a corner unless you absolutely have to, but you're a lot more likely, especially on wet roads, to uh, have yourself lose control or have slips and have to uh, maneuver the bike to get out of it. And then once we finish our corner, we uh, can start accelerating, which is nice. And then we can get on it and uh, we're living the dream, we're having fun. So, so there's that. So and then when I say uh, in slow out fast and that kind of stuff, like we don't got to go out fast, but we want to go in slow for sure. But say you're uh, riding on a, a dry road or a dirt road and you're feeling pretty comfortable and you're kind of playing a little bit. So this is our lane, like there's the other lanes over here or whatever. So we're going to use a left hand turn again, but uh, if you apex your corner, so you're, you're riding in, we're doing our braking before the corner, but say the roads are good conditions and we're able to apex this corner. They're not necessarily wet or gravelly or anything. So we, uh, we come in and we're going slow. And uh, at this point, we can't see the exit of the corner yet. So we don't know this corner for all we know when we're coming into it, it could keep going, right? So we don't know that until we uh, see the opening of the corner. So as we're coming in, we're apexing right about here. Like, like if you're riding on a backcountry road, sometimes there's a lot of trees, so you can't see where the corner is going or when it starts opening up. But when you get to about here in this case, we can now see that the uh, corner is uh, opening up or almost to the exit. And, uh, And that's when we can start accelerating out of it. So we can start accelerating out. And uh, you know that you're safe because you get into a straight stretch where if this corner continued, and if you start accelerating, you'll start drifting towards the outside of the corner. And if you don't catch yourself or if that corner suddenly turns even sharper, you might be uh, off the road and in a ditch. So that's kind of where that's saying, in slow, because you come in slow, you do your braking, 
slower than you need to be so you know you're not going to overshoot. And then your, the out fast portion of that comment comes from once you see the opening of the uh, corner, that's when you can start getting on the gas if you wanted and accelerating out, assuming that the road conditions are safe to do so. If the road conditions are wet, I would just stay slow all the way through and uh, to avoid risking overshooting a corner or getting a bit of a slide because it's not a fun situation. So another thing to watch out for, so this is our lane and uh, this would be like the uh, left and right tire track, right? So we're just gonna assume it's just a, uh, a, a two lane road and we're showing just our lane in this uh, picture. But that's what the road typically looks like. Like if you, like right here would be, uh, So like you get these uh, two divots in a row that has any type of uh, age on it around here, usually after a year or two, if, even if it's a fresh road, if the road's a year or two old, you start getting these uh, divots. If you live in a dry or less wintry climate, I think the roads last longer before they start getting uh, beat up real bad like this. So we get these divots because that's where the, uh, all the vehicles, all the four wheel vehicles, are traveling and uh, those typically correlate pretty good with where we stagger ourselves in, in the lane. So you get like your uh, left and right tire track, right? And that's usually pretty close to where we're riding when we're where we're supposed to be. So that's where those come from. And then uh, so this is kind of leading to two parts of riding in the rain. Um, one thing we're going to talk about is when it's beginning to rain and then we're going to move on to when it's been raining for a while and it's two different risks. So that kind of puts us into, or what I do is two different riding positions depending on the, uh, when it started raining and when it, uh, if it's been raining for a while and it's starting to accumulate, it puts me into two different riding positions on the same road. So if it's just, uh, a light drizzle, just spitting, even a light rain, and it's uh, not really accumulating much. If I'm, I'm gonna ride in my uh, tire track. So especially if I'm by myself, I'd be in the left tire track normally, sometimes the right, depending on what lane I'm actually in. But since we're using just a uh, two lane road, one lane one way, one lane the other, we're just gonna talk about the left tire track to keep it simple. So we'll, erase the right because we're only going to talk about the left just because we're going to assume that we're riding on a uh, two-lane road so we're going to be in the left tire track is where we should be so we got all these uh, cars that every day run on the road you have some nice cars you have some old jalopies but you have cars that are leaking oil and typically when they're leaking oil and that might be just a couple of drips but over time with hundreds of, and thousands of cars driving over the same road, especially if it hasn't run in a couple months, that oil kind of accumulates in all the pores of the road. And uh, that oil is always going to be typically in the uh, center because your motor... Oh, I'll just do the... Something like that. It's a little carburetor. So your motor is in the center of the vehicle, same with your transmission, your differentials are typically in the center. I know there's a few vehicles where the rear differential is off centered, but those are few and far between. And then four wheel drive trucks, typically the front differentials either left or right, depending on the make and manufacturer, but almost all your uh, stuff containing oil in a car or truck is in the center. So this area will uh, pool with uh, oil and uh, you might not be able to see it, right? Just a little bit over time, it's in the pores of the road doesn't really affect us. We could ride in that center and it wouldn't matter. But as soon as it starts raining, so here's our rain coming down. So the rain's coming down and all this oil that's uh, been in the center of the road, it starts uh, 
coming to the surface with the light drizzle. It is not enough rain to wash the oil away, but it's enough rain or drizzle to bring the oil up to the surface, creating that really slick surface, kind of like when we were riding on uh, fresh asphalt. This typically isn't as bad as fresh asphalt, but we want to avoid the center of the road because that's where our highest risk of uh, oil and slipping would uh, come from, would be in the center. So we want to avoid that and we want to stick to our left tire track or if we're riding in a group, your left and right tire track. So in the center of the road, assume that there's oil, even if you can't see it, when it's beginning to rain, assume there's oil there and you want to uh, avoid riding on that crown. So now we're going to talk about, it's been raining for a while, it's uh, heavy rain, the rain doesn't have anywhere to run. So as that rain comes down, so the rain's coming down, it's going to fill in all the low spots. So it's going to start filling in first spots that has nowhere else to run, our uh, left and right tire track. They're going to get uh, filled up with water first. And I've, I've run into this a few times running on freeways more. So I find in town, other than splashing a lot of water, typically if you're going like 60 or below, you're not going to hydroplane. That's not always true, but nine times out of 10, we're, unless the puddle is incredibly deep and it, we're not going to hydroplane. But if you're running on the freeways at like 120 kilometer or 75 mile an hour or something, which would be uh, your speed limit on your freeways typically, this water can cause us the hydroplane. And I've had it happen a few times that usually my tires are trying to get old when it happens, but it does happen. You'll feel the bike almost kind of lift up and you can kind of feel the back end starting to uh, go one way or the other on you. And usually it depends where you are in this uh, crown. If you're on uh, this side of the crown, it's going to push the back of the tire towards the center of the lane. If you're on this side of the crown, it's going to push your back of the tire to the other side of the lane. Just, just the way the forces work on everything, that's typically how it goes. But then like even your body posture, if you're kind of lean one way or the other, just the way you're sitting, that will affect which way the bike's going to go as well. So you can keep that in mind. So, so assuming it's a heavy rain, water's accumulating, sometimes it doesn't run off the road and it starts accumulating into uh, these tire tracks or there's a puddle on the road. So you want to avoid puddles, especially if you're at speed because your bike will actually pick up and start hydroplaning in these, in these low valleys. So when, when the roads start getting really bad and really wet, I typically try to ride in the uh, center here. So I'll typically, instead of riding in the left or right tire track, I'll try to ride in the center in a heavy rain. Because if it's a really heavy rain and we're getting puddles, typically it's been raining for a little while at that point if we're getting good accumulation, which means all the oil that would have been on the center or majority of the oil at this point is most likely already washed away. And uh, we know that this middle part of the road you can tell just by looking you can kind of feel the bike a little bit too when you're just driving but typically the center part of the road is higher ground than uh, your left or right tire track so when it's a really heavy rain i'll uh, drift over to the center of the lane to avoid the risk of hydroplaning if i'm in town usually no i'll just uh, lift my legs up or just avoid if i see a puddle and then stick to my tire tracks. But if I'm ride, running on the highway at all and it's raining heavy and it's starting to accumulate and get lots of puddles, I typically drift over to the center of the lane to avoid those uh, deep water pockets and avoid hydroplaning because I've hydroplaned a few times. I've never wiped out from it, but you do feel that bike start to go. You hear the revs start to jump up. And uh, if it catches you off guard, or if you're not very experienced, it could uh, be a really bad situation for you. So if it's been raining for a while, puddles accumulating, 
drift over and run in the uh, center of the lane is typically better. Always use your own judgment. Don't uh, think this works all the time, but typically that's what I do unless the road or the conditions tell me otherwise. I'll, uh, I'll drift over into the center. Um, one other nice thing about being in the center of the road, it, uh, when you have vehicles coming at you, especially transports and that, you get a little less of a spray from them, but that usually doesn't phase me too much. And uh, even the vehicles in front of you, most of the water they're throwing up is coming from the wheels. So when you're in the center, you kind of get a little less water, but usually by this point, you're already soaked and drenched anyways. So it, uh, you don't really care too much usually by that point. But yeah, so, so if you're getting a lot of puddles in your left and right tire track where you theoretically should be riding, it's okay to uh, drift to the top part of the crown of the road in between those two tire tracks once it's been raining for a bit because that oil's washed away and uh, you're on a little bit higher ground so there's less uh, chance of puddles there and the oil's gone for the most part so there's not as much of a risk of slipping on the oil. So this can, uh, th th this can be a, a big uh, help in uh, heavy rain conditions. <clears throat> so these are manholes. The manhole covers are also really slick. So they, in this case, we got one on the left and one on the right tire track. So if we were on our bike, especially if it's raining out, we'd want to just go around like that, for example avoid them or you could even hug the other side of the lane or if you're running on this tire track you could go there we can go like that but those manhole covers are incredibly slick I, i've gone slow over them before knowing that they're slick and still felt myself starting to slide out underneath my <clears throat> and, and still found myself feeling like it, the bike was starting to slide out and i wasn't uh cornering hard or anything so they're incredibly slick. You want to stay off of those. Same thing with the road snakes or the lines on the road. They're all super, super slick. Other things to uh, keep in mind when you're riding, things that I've uh, noticed in the rain. If, uh, like I, I wear goggles on my bike. I don't wear a full face helmet. If you have a full face helmet, that's uh, definitely safer and better for a couple different reasons. But uh, I wear a half helmet, so I wear goggles, but I feel as though it'd be true as well if you had a full face helmet with a visor. So when you're riding in the rain, everything starts getting wet, the water starts beating up on your uh, lenses. If you uh, take your hand or your sleeve and you wipe it, I find it makes it worse. It gives you uh, a lot of streaks, I find, and the water doesn't beat as nice, and I find it harder to uh, see. So what I typically do when it starts getting uh, pretty watery, if you have a windshield on, try to stick your head up above the windshield. If you don't have a windshield, even better. But uh, turn your head to each side. Like make sure there's nothing in front of you. You're cruising at speed at like 100 kilometer an hour or whatever. You're, you're cruising on the highway. And uh, just turn your head and the, uh, with turning your head, it helps to blow the water off your goggles or lens, I find. So you do that on both sides. And uh, I find that's the best way for clearing the, the water so you can see. Because I've always found if I wipe it, it makes it worse. And I usually end up stopping and having to try to clean my goggles. And then they seem to fog up more. But I find if I can just turn my head one side, maybe count to three, other side count to three, it seems to blow the water off better and I find I can see better. So that's always a good little thing to keep in mind. If you have any other questions on riding in the rain or riding in anything else, for example, just leave a comment and I'll either respond back in a comment or maybe I'll make a part two. I didn't really uh, prep and plan for this uh, video. Somebody asked me in another video, they commented on uh, what are some things for riding in the rain. And 
I just thought I was going to have too hard of a time trying to explain it all. And even this, I'm not sure if I'm explaining it the best that I could necessarily, but with the chalkboard, I find it helps a little bit. So, so just leave a comment. And if I get a lot of comments on the uh, same thing, or if uh, you have questions about other stuff, like writing in groups or anything like that, I can do another video. I can do almost kind of like a part two. If, if this video is, uh, if, if people like this, type of stuff. I can do more videos like this. This is uh, pretty helpful for a lot of people probably. So, and it's, if you go on Google and type stuff in, there's going to be a lot more stuff than what I'm uh, mentioning, most likely. But these are the things that I keep in mind when I ride. So I wanted to uh, try to keep it short and simple, but I know it's not going to be short and simple. But I wanted to do the stuff that I do whenever I ride in the rain or when I'm riding on dirt or riding in uh, snow or some type of weather so yeah so i hope that kind of helps oh one other thing i should uh mention when we're making our turns we'll do a, a right turn this time So we're just going to do an intersection and uh, we're going to do a right hand turn because they're typically a lot tighter and uh, a lower speed. So we're, so we come in, typically we apex and then away we go, staying that left tire track the whole time. Other than the apex portion, if there's a lot of uh, dirt or sand on the road that you see, whether it's uh, dry or raining, sometimes you can't always apex. You're better off to uh, go the long way and stay in whatever tire track you're in versus apexing, but we're not too worried about that right now. But typically you're, uh, you're coming in and uh, you're in first gear, making it, on most bikes you'd be in first gear making a right hand turn. If you're at an intersection like this, you're coming either come to a complete stop if it's like a stop sign and you have your uh, thick strip right there that's that's what's really slippery in the uh, when it's wet is the uh, stop lines they're incredibly slick but uh, but we're making our turn and uh, so we, we we're either coming from a complete stop or we're shifting into first gear and then we're going through if you're running on a uh, a sports bike or something like that that runs smoother than a, a big V twin because big V twins kind of thump, especially at lower uh, speeds and lower RPM. Versus sports bikes are typically a lot smoother, and uh, or like a Goldwing would be really smooth too. They have extra cylinders; they just kind of purr. They're they're nice bikes, and uh, even some of the uh, parallel twins in that run smoother than. The, the big heavy V twins that a lot of us have, like my Yamaha has a big thumping V twin, like all the Harleys have big thumping V twins. So when you're running really low first gear, you you can almost feel the uh, engine fire and that like bup, 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 and you can feel that. So every time you have a cylinder fire, it gives a little extra power to the rear wheel, if that makes sense. So when you're slowing down and you're crawling through this corner, especially if you're going from like a dead stop or if you've slowing right down and you initiate your corner trying to stay at constant speed, but you have those uh, thumps from the cylinder when it's firing, it can actually almost make you uh, break loose if it, uh, just cause it, it's kind of jerky almost at that speed, like your uh, belt or your chain or your drive shaft, they're not, running smooth necessarily. They're almost kind of snappy as you get the fires if you're running really slow or, or in a really low RPM in uh, any gear, I guess, really. But in this case, we're talking about first gear in a corner. So that could actually make you break loose. Or if you, uh, you're running so low and you kind of touch the throttle, it's going to have a lot more snapping effect to break loose versus if you're at a little more speed. But in a right hand turns, typically we're running pretty low 
in our uh, RPM range. So I'm going to get a little bit of flock for this because you should never uh, clutch or uh, shift in the corner. And uh, saying that, I'm going to tell you to uh, feather your clutch or even pull the clutch all the way in and coast through the corner. And uh, if you uh, take any motorcycle course or uh, read anything online, they're all going to probably tell you to never be shifting or clutching or coasting through a corner. But when the roads are really wet or if there's a lot of sand in the corners, and you're running a big B twin. If you're on a sports bike or, or even like a small single or something, you're not going to be getting that uh, thumping action. But if you run a, if if you drive a big V twin like my Yamaha's a 1700, so like those cylinders are pretty huge, right? So when they fire, they, you you, you can feel when they're firing when they're at a really low RPM, like it's almost kind of jerking you if you're running really low, and that's hard on everything, so you don't want to do that. But uh, but yeah, so if you're coming in your corner and you're running where the bike's almost kind of, you can feel it firing, you're kind of pushing you back and forth, you can feel, you can really feel the thump, you're more likely to, uh, when it thumps, if it's really sandy or uh, wet and slick, like it was like fresh asphalt especially, you might actually start to break loose and uh, lose control at like 5 mile an hour or 10, five, five, or 10 mile an hour or something silly like that. So if you, uh, when you come into the corner, if you uh, clutch in, if you're coming to speed, that'd be the easiest way would just be clutch in, coast through until you uh, basically on the straight stretch and then light gently feather your clutch out and go. So, but most things, and I'm probably gonna get some flack on this video for saying that, but if I'm with a big V twin, that's your uh, safest bet. If you're coming in with speed, you've slowed down, you clutch, you coast, and then you feather the clutch out and go. If you're on a driving test, don't do that. They'll uh, take points off or fail you for it. Whether you're in a car or on a bike, you're not supposed to be touching the clutch or coasting through a corner. I know that, but in this case, like in early spring riding when there's lots of sand, sometimes I'll clutch in because my V twin will uh, kind of uh, pulsate like that because it's such a big displacement at such a low RPM. You can feel the cylinders firing. So I know it's wrong, but it's right. And uh, in, in these cases, it's the right thing to do, in my opinion. And uh, it will uh, help you out. If, if you don't think I'm right, you don't need to leave any uh, mean comments or anything. Just, uh, just don't do it. So, And then uh, if you're at a dead stop, so like say there was like a stop sign here. So we had to uh, stop at our line and then uh, accelerate and go. Instead of either going a little bit straight like the clutch out and turning or uh, trying to let the clutch out throughout the corner like all the way, because that's gonna more likely make you want to kick out and slide. Just, uh, just gently feather your clutch. Make sure you're giving enough RPM that you don't accidentally stall, but not so much RPM where you're gonna still break loose, but just kind of gently feather the clutch until you get the bike completely vertical where you're not leaned anymore, then let the clutch out the rest of the way and accelerate and uh, continue riding. So, but I, I do that lots in the early spring if I'm on my big bike, not so much my little 250, it, it runs pretty smooth so I can almost well, the clutch out fast as I can, I'm typically okay in the rain or on uh, pebbles or anything on the road. But on my big bike, it pulsates so much. So if you're trying to go, yeah, so on my big bike, if you're trying to start going and you let the uh, clutch out too quick all the way, it might just start to go. And it's heavy too, like it's about 800 pounds. So when that starts to go on you it's really hard to recover especially at a lower speed i find it hard to recover because at a higher speed you have some centrifugal force from your tires that always automatically wants to upright the bike which helps us out but at a lower speed you don't have that centrifugal force effect to help ride a bike up so i will typically if i'm at a dead stop just 
feather it nice and easy till I'm straight or almost all the way straight and level. And then you can give her out and then same thing coming in. I'll uh, coast through the whole corner, let the clutch out and go if it's uh, really bad. Um, and when you're doing this stuff, make sure that if the road's really bad condition, that you're doing that, uh, you're still doing your push steering with your arms like you should always be doing, but you're also pushing with the opposite leg on your foot peg to help keep the bike, uh, the bike center of gravity in a, a nice low stance and uh, gives you a lot more stability, especially with these tight right hand corners. There's a lot going on on these corners because you're typically on the clutch in that more. Like if we were making a left hand turn and the uh, you're coming in and you're either running mid to high first gear or low second gear, but you're able to slow down along here and you come into the corner and you uh, just maintain a steady speed, then you can accelerate once you get to here and then go. You don't necessarily have to uh, clutch in or feather the clutch. You're most likely not going to be. I typically don't touch the clutch when I'm doing my left hand turns. Especially if I'm coming in with speed, I'm usually uh, typically low uh, second gear, but you're usually above that RPM where you're really thumping. So you don't typically have to touch the clutch if your bike's up a little bit different or if you feel as though you do and if the roads are wet or sandy. Don't feel bad if you grab your clutch and coast through that corner, but you shouldn't need to in a left-hand corner nine times out of ten. So we're at our stop sign, so we've pulled up, and now we're going to accelerate and go. So you, uh, you start letting the clutch out, and typically, because like you have the whole width of the lane, so lane anywhere from, what, 8 to 10 feet wide? So you have like 8 or 10 feet to accelerate and get your clutch out, and then uh, do your turn. So I usually have uh, let my clutch all the way out before I've started this turn. I'm usually, uh, if I'm from a dead stop, I'm usually mid first gear at this point. Not all the time, it, de it depends on a lot, but so even like lower first gear, but usually up to an RPM where the bike's running uh, smooth, they're usually at least at like 1500 RPM or better. And the bikes will typically run pretty smooth at that point compared to if you're down around uh, 500 RPM, that's when you really feel those uh, thumps from the engine. So you can typically get your clutch all the way out, go nice and easy, finish your turn, and then get on the gas and go. So, but if for some reason you couldn't get your clutch out fast enough, if you're into this point where you've started making your turn and you haven't let your clutch all the way out, I would probably drag the clutch until you get straight through and then let it the rest of the way out, just in case you, uh, think you're almost all the way out and you release it the rest of the way and it gives you a snap action and then you'd lay your bike down in the middle of the intersection. So, so that's okay if you have to uh, do that. <clears throat> but you will, you will get flack, but that's all right. I wouldn't worry about that too much. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you found this uh, helpful. If you want more videos like this, let me know if you have any questions or anything about this or other riding stuff. Let me know and I'll respond back or I'll, I'll make another video if it uh, is easier to reply back that way. But I hope this was helpful. I hope this helps you out a little bit. Some of these techniques, they're uh, better to try on, good, on a good dry sunny day so you can get the uh, feel of it so it's not uh, a new feeling to you, if that makes sense. So... You kind of, you know how the bike's going to feel and how it's going to react when you uh, do stuff. So, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification button. And uh, check me out on Instagram at Clara Garage. Have a great night.